Uh, hello everyone, welcome back to, I don't know what number this is of the podcast, but welcome back to the podcast with me, Aaron and James. It's, n- it's number 46, so. Oh, oh yeah, because we're recording these out of order, aren't we, at the moment, so it's a bit it's a bit confusing, but number 46. I remember we did number 44 Friday, oh, wait, honestly, oh man, I can't remember, I honestly can't remember, but um, I think this is number 46, we'll, we'll find out when we upload this. Yeah. Um, Just saying, we are recording so yeah. this Sunday. So yeah, yeah. So first things first, the cheeky YouTube news from the Asmeister two thousand. Uh, so yeah, this is a bit of a bit of a long one. Uh, but do you know who Unbox Therapy is? Uh, yeah, I never actually bother watching any of the videos because I don't. Most unboxing videos, I don't really see the point. I really liked Boogie's unboxing the playstation 4 video that was hilarious and i can't really remember many other unboxing videos that i've ever actually watched really just more like comedic ones that are like parodying it really because it's cool to see like what they've bought but you know it isn't i'm not really bothered to be honest you can look on the internet what this thing looks like but i suppose it's just getting their opinion on what the items like and how it looks in from them outside the box when they put it outside the box oh yeah uh unbox therapy he's um because you know he's been in like a few quote unquote scams slash um, like misleading his audience what sort of scams has he been involved in well the mo- the most recent one is he he got into contact with this company yeah you know right this is really really weird but you know pablo escobar oh uh, yeah isn't that uh, isn't he like a gangster or something he was like the Cu- cuban drug lord i think i could be wrong don't hold me a colombian Co- sorry not cuban uh- I saw something about him on Netflix, but I just never bothered watching it. Um, basically, his brother owns a phone company, and through some weird backdoor deal, Unbox Therapy got one of these phones to do like a, an unboxing and a re- and a review on. But in the video, Unbox Therapy basically loved this phone, said it was the best thing ever, um, and it turns out this phone is a massive scam because. Oh. Um, they, they only make... Because basically, you know the Samsung flip phone or the foldable phone? Mm-hmm. What they've done is they've literally just got one of them and put on, like, Escobar Incorporated on it. Oh. So then when... And they're only sending these out to people who are going to re- review them. So when people actually go to buy the phone, say if me and you wanted to buy it, we would receive nothing. we just end up paying $500 and getting absolutely nothing. What? So wait, normal. So hold on, normal people can buy it then, but no. they just send it. who are going to review it. So, so what they're doing is they want to they want to make it seem like it's a product that everyone can buy, but there isn't actually a product. They're only sending out these fake phones to make it look like there's a product. And then when they, when they've got your money, they won't send you anything. No. I hate this sort of scumbaggery, to be honest. I mean, Unbox Therapy already has loads of money in the bank. So, more. first off, why just, you shouldn't do it anyway, even if you have zero money. Earn the money the right way, the legal way. But still, even if you even if you have whatever amount of money you have, you really shouldn't be trying to scam other people out of their hard-earned cash, you know. Oh, no. I mean, he isn't the most likeable guy anymore because he's had quite a few instances now where he's just lied to his fan base and has effectively scammed his fan base as well as other companies out of money in their products. But I don't want to get into all of these different scams, but he's got quite a few that he's, that he's done. He, out of interest, then, why is he digging a deeper hole, then, for himself? Um, Money. No, okay. He, what is he running for, then? No, he, he wants to... Basically, from this is some weird, deep look into him, but I'm guessing he wants to change his image from a YouTuber to a businessman. Oh, okay. So he's you ain't, trying to make yeah, deals you ain't, with people. Well, the thing is, you ain't going to get anywhere by scamming people long term. You'll get somewhere in the short term. You might make a quick bit of money, but long term, your reputation will just go down the shitter. And then people won't want to do business with you. Or you'll get... Has he not got locked up then for this? Isn't this illegal? Stealing um, people's money? It's, it's so weird. Um, you'd think he'd get in some sort of trouble or he'd, he'd you know something would happen to him but it seems like nothing's happening to him at the moment i mean he's been going is- he's been going on from scams since whenever the iphone 6 was released or 6s um well, so since like 15 
Yeah, like, yeah, around 2015, yeah, around then. It, I mean, it's bizarre, really, how someone can get away with this <gasps> for five years. I think it's because he's got a massive fan base, so people sort of, all companies on like, turn a blind eye to it. That's a bit disgusting. Can't the fans just call the police on him and say, yeah, this person's robbed $500 off me, can we get him back? I mean, I'm guessing he's been reported, but I guess they're just thinking bigger things are going on at the moment. Yeah, so. I suppose. Really annoying, to be honest. He's got all this money already and he still has to do stuff to people. Oh, well, I suppose... It's just a lesson learnt, to be honest. If someone, if a famous person scams you loads of times, first off, don't even watch them anymore because they don't deserve your views, you know, for you to spend time watching them. And to be honest, if all he's doing is unboxing things, how is that even entertaining? You know? Yeah. It's a bit confusing, really. If that's all he, all he comes out with, just constant unboxing, I don't really see the point. And also, if he's going to scam you, but he doesn't care about you, you you know, the fans, he isn't bothered, so why bother watching him? Don't understand this. But yeah, that's the So last... is he the... Oh, sorry. Didn't say yours. Is he the scammer on YouTube, then? Is he a scammer on YouTube? Yeah, is he the biggest scammer on YouTube? Um, like, has he done that? I honestly don't know. Um, he's not, like, doing dodgy deals every single day. It's like, he, he, he does a lot of very questionable stuff behind the scenes and then it eventually comes out okay but um i honestly have no idea if he's the biggest he's got a pretty big fan base um i forgot how many subs he has he's on at least like what 15 20 million bloody hell i suppose he's just a don on youtube then he can just get away with whatever really i'll just see how many he's got 16 million subs bloody hell mad <laughs> In fact, at the time of this this video being at the time this video being recorded, he's just uploaded a video responding to it. So oh, to we're, the... we're gonna have to. Uh, watch, I might watch that and then do something like a video on it, maybe. Yeah, fair enough. So, is that all the news you've got then? Any more uh, info or? Uh, no, that's the only news I've sort of brought with me. Cause that, there wasn't really that much going on, um, YouTube boys. All right then, fair enough. So, anyway, the main topic of today is what makes a bad movie. So, I will start it off by saying, usually, like, if we're talking about the crappiest films of all time, like, really, really weird films, like, I don't know, just random Armand Asante films, or, like, really low-level John Travolta films, like the Gotti remake, or... Batman and Robin, etc. I suppose they are still they still have the film. Pardon. I was going to say there's that weird bat, not Battlestar, that weird alien one from like 2000, the one to Scientology. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I forgot what it's called. Yeah, my mate. Uh, my mate lent that to uh, one of our teachers in college, and he never gave it back. So I'm surprised that he's still... He, I don't think he even ever watched it. <laughs> so. He just burnt it. <sighs> Probably. Wouldn't surprise me. But yeah, I was I was quite interested in seeing that. Because you know, Travolta, he said, this is some of my best work. It's better than Pulp Fiction, in my opinion. And it's like, bro, have you gone mental? He said, he sort of said the same. Have you seen The Fanatic? Or have you heard about it? Uh, no, I haven't, unfortunately. Uh, basically, it's this film where John Travolta he plays this obsessed fan, and it's one of the weirdest things ever. He walks into a bar, and the first line is, you know, someone says, chocolate mousse. And then the first line, John Travolta says, is, I can't talk, I gotta poo. <laughs> That's the first line of the film. I mean, it's unbelievable. And then there's another scene where he, uh, to, to earn money on the side, He's um he's a British he he pretends to be a Brit in person as a British policeman so he's not actually pretending he's a British policeman he like he's not impersonating a cop but he's dressing up as them to entertain people so he just goes the Beatles are here the Beatles are here London Bridge is right over there pop the cock like it's really bizarre man oh. what do you think Aaron oh, um what of John Travolta yeah, no, no, of that film I'm describing to you. There's another scene where he goes, um, 
where he try where he strangles this dude for a few seconds and goes, I wish your head would get cut off by Freddy Krueger, and then it'd roll in the road, and a truck would squish it. <laughs> And then, and then the final bit I want to bring up is he puts some moose horns on his head and goes, Watch out, moose is in the house. And runs around the living room. Watch out, moose is in the house. Here's moosey. <laughs> I honestly don't know. This seems like one of your jokes, but I know it's real. I'm just saying. No, it is a real film. Yeah. Trust me, look up the fanatic. And I think, I don't know, I don't think it's on YouTube anymore. It was on YouTube for a time. But they, um, Obviously, got rid of it, I think. So, we, I think it's pretty cheap on DVD, to be honest, or Blu ray. Just get it cheap and, or just don't watch it or watch scenes from it on YouTube and <laughs> and you can make your own opinion on this masterpiece. Get You'll never guess who directed the film, though. Fred Durst, man. Can you believe it? Limp Biscuit. Wait, Fred. Oh, I was going to say. That sounds really. F his name sounds. He. he <laughs> The main, the lead vocalist for Limp Biscuit directed the film. Mental, absolutely mental. Um, but yeah, the main character I thought is John Travolta just pissing around as a joke, and then it came out that the, then I looked into it, and apparently the main character is meant to be severely autistic. So it's a bit sad. But why would John Travolta act like that? Why not make him like moderately autistic or something, and give him a bit of character instead of just making him act like a lunatic? I have I no know. idea. <laughs> but yeah, The Fanatic didn't really have that much effort put into it. It was just a really weird, bizarre film. Um, so yeah, that's an example of films with no effort put into it. There are big Hollywood films like um, the Transformers movies, which are just like all loads and loads of CG, bad characters, bad writing, boring story, but you know, a load of junkyards having sex. So some people like them fight scenes, don't they? Yeah. Um, People of Transformers, I suppose. So, uh, I was gonna say um, something I wanted to bring up was there's a lot of um, of the of the studios not trusting the directors, is there? True. So, like uh, I, I, the example I've got is you know Fantastic Four, the 2015 one. No, I can, I've never seen that. What happened oh, with it? it it's really, it it's really bad. Basically, the director and slash writer had an okay idea for it. He said. But then they, the studio, like Fox, basically fired him and then reshot all the scenes and then blamed him for the movie failing. That's weird. It's basically because they have a vision. Because it's all um, like executives sat around a table wanting a movie to go one way when they actually have no idea what is going on. Yeah. It's like with the X Men Origins, like, you know, 2009. That's another pretty good example, I think. Another X Men film like they messed up again. Oh yeah, because they're back. Well, they made Deadpool, but go mute. Like, why? Uh, sorry about that, everyone. There was a bit of an issue on my end. I uh, there was it was just dropping frames for some reason. But anyways, this is just get back to it. Yeah. So um, I'll tell you something that's bad in my opinion. Right, one of the what. What makes a bad film, I'd say, is it being too cliched. Where I understand film buffs, you know, like myself, can see films and predict a lot of stuffs what that that will happen. You know, but like obviously, in a big franchise that has had a million films pumped out, the main character isn't going to die in the first one, are they? You know, and all this other stuff, the basic things that you know, oh yeah, this character, this character, he's the an that's the antagonist, that's the protagonist, blah 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 blah. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm on about obvious cliches. Like, okay, as an example now, I know all the Disney Renaissance films aren't bad, but you know, it, you know what happens in all of them. You can predict all of them. They're just about some princess and this prince and this bad person, and they're getting this massive fight, and then the bad person either turns good or dies, and then they live happily ever after. The princess and the geezer. That's quite a good example of like films just being the same thing um a lot of these um end of the world no horror films as well you always get some overpowered slasher and beat them in a really weird or good way i guess then they make 10 more films and the same slasher 
evil slasher keeps coming back in everyone so somehow the slasher keeps surviving being killed i mean what is the point of like who asked for 10 jason films or whatever who asked for that rubbish you know what is the point of 10 nonsense crazy man oh, no. and as i say who and who asked for a million films about a princess falling in love with some geezer no one I mean, I guess it's just them, well, as I said, it's probably um, the studio in some weird direction that they want to go in. But it is really annoying when, when you can guess an entire movie's plot just by like, looking at the poster or look at the studio that's done it. Yeah. Well, at least it saves you money going in to see it and saves you time. Yeah. I mean, some cliches are good. Uh, you don't want to be subverting expectations too much, especially in like a massive, massive franchise. But you don't want to be able to predict everything that's going to happen in the film or nearly everything that's going to happen. So, um, yeah. I feel like music can make or break films, really. I can't think of many really big films that have like really bad music. I can think of films with great music, like the Shrek 1 and Shrek 2 soundtrack. Star Wars has phenomenal music. Indiana Jones, Jaws, uh, the old spaghetti westerns with Clint Eastwood, you know. Um, they all have fantastic music. And you just, if you got a thing, right? If, a lot, like, say Shrek, for example, if All Star wasn't at the start of Shrek when Shrek busts out the toilet and starts, you know, having fun in his swamp, imagine if they played, um, I don't know, Sunshine. Um, uh, here comes the sun by the Beatles. I know I was sing about to sing Sunshine and Lollipops then, but <laughs> imagine if they played Here Comes the Sun or, I don't know, a Lady Gaga song or something really stupid. It, it wouldn't make sense, would it? Or imagine if they played Skyfall when Shrek busts out the toilet. <laughs> oh, that would be so weird. So I feel like music can really make or break a film. I can't think of films with really bad music, to be honest. A lot of bad films don't have don't put the effort into having music in them. I know a lot of good films don't always have a lot of music in them. I hear Pulp Fiction that had a sick soundtrack and Reservoir Dogs had a good soundtrack, especially the intro song. The only Reservoir Dogs song I wasn't a massive fan of was the... Um, the credit song was a bit weird, to be honest, but I suppose it was just, you know, it was the mood. I guess it's how you would feel at the, as the audience after a bad, sad ending, I guess. But yeah, bad music, um, that can ruin a film. Uh, I was gonna, I was gonna make this point as well. Um, you know those movies that happen right around, like some holiday event. Not not Christmas movies, but like like a cash grab. I don't know how to explain it properly, but let's say there's like a trend that builds up. Um, and by the time a movie studio has got together all the people to make a movie, that trend is like long gone. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to think of an example. But in like some movies, it's like weird references. So like they'll say like a weird joke that was funny like four years ago, because it takes them like two. Oh, years they're to relevant at the time. Yeah. Yeah, it's like movies that don't really have an audience and they're just made to grab your cash. It was just constant, constant cliches. A lot of animated kids' films do that. Like they. Oh, they include movies, loads and so. loads and loads of. I haven't, I didn't know about the Playmobil movie doing it, but I'll use a good example of one, like Madagascar, that had half decent comedy in it, the first one, but it was mostly just references shoved down everyone's throats, really. What what really freaked me out is that they have an American Beauty reference in it where uh, another bloke, oh man, it's a bit bad to bring this up, but uh, people bring it up and joke about it, but Kevin Spacey. Basically, he fantasizes about his friend's daughter who's like 18, and um, Kevin Spacey's like, I don't know, 40 or, or whatever. And he's fantasizing about her in the film, and they take that scene and put it into Madagascar, and then Alex is licking Marty's um, stomach. But he's oh, fantasizing about steaks, it's quite weird. I mean, uh, what do you is... think of that scene, Aaron? Um, I don't really know how to comment on that without being put on some sort of register. But um, in in a lot of those movies, um, there's a lot of weird like jokes that are hidden in there, aren't they? For, like parents and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Some of them are good. Some of them are a bit meh. Yeah, I mean, a lot of poo jokes, a lot of fart jokes as well. I mean, I guess like most people. Oh, I don't want to sound weird, but 
on on like an entire population or whatever on an entire country's population a good percentage of them are going to laugh at a random fart joke aren't they yeah but not when it's re repeated throughout the whole film yeah oh yeah yeah i meant like just a, just a one off thing but then yeah by the end of it everyone sort of stops laughing yeah Oh, but Madagascar did have some good jokes in it, but I just why would they just spam spam out movie references all the time? I don't mind movie references done well, but when your whole film is just a load loads of movie references, what is the point? Why would people want to come back to that? I suppose for in Madagascar's case, for the um, comedies, the, the comedy aspect, I guess. But still, it's um, it's just a bit daft to me, to be honest with you. I just don't really understand films that like just revolve around references constantly. I mean, they, um, they, um, Lord of the Flies, that was another one that they parodied because they're obviously, um, there was a dead pilot in, in the, um, in the lemurs plane. And also it's set on an island, but there's loads of films set on an island. Well, not loads, but there's a few films set on the island. Um, yeah. But really, really weird to be honest. Loads and loads of parodies. Um, I did bloody hell. Wait, what? What's happened? No, I've just looked up at all the uh, bloody, <laughs> the bloody references, and there's loads. Oh. I'll have the Wilhelm scream. Oh. I think every movie has that. Loads. Yeah, there's loads of references. Yeah, true, yeah. One of the pictures of Mr. Chu in the end credits represents the Jurassic Park logo. Bloody hell, they really look... These people really look into this, man. I didn't even notice. I mainly just noticed the Planet of the Apes reference when he's like, Darn you all to heck! And then, you blew it up! Which was a bit like... I just feel like, with all these film references, wouldn't you just put on an old film instead and just forget about this bloody... Weird castaway ripoff. I mean, I guess it is obviously you know children watching it, but um... no, but a lot will be there as well. But yeah, I suppose you can't put an 18 plus film with some three year olds enjoying Madagascar. I mean, you could. I was going to say though, something. another thing that Madagascar, yeah. the kid might not like it, but um, yeah, another thing that Madagascar falls into though is that like, and some other films do this, but I just can't think of them where the story, the Madagascar story, is meant to be about Marty. Well, you think at the start it's about Marty going into the wild and becoming a, you know, one with nature, but then it just it's about Alex becoming a vegetarian and like, well, Alex avoiding his primal instinct to eat meat. It's just very weird. No, no, he doesn't become a vegetarian. He just ends up eating fish. Sorry, he just ends up eating fish. So, but I don't like it when it focuses on one thing. And I mean, sometimes it can be done in a good way. Like loads of Simpsons episodes, they focus on one little thing, and the rest of the episodes about something else. Because I don't know, it's just to get people interested, I guess. But films that do it, like why get us invested in this character, and then like take us away from that character and move on to something else i don't see the point yeah it does seem to be like they're just because they're changing put, uh, the script on the fly yeah yeah um another thing that I think makes a bad film is when like people um obviously we said about when they repeat the same thing it's cliched obviously too many sequels can make a bad film but that sort of fell into the cliche thing when we talked about so many sequels in Loads and loads and loads of franchises. But um, I feel like when there's too much green screen, that can ruin things. Oh, yeah, because I remember um, you know, like, when they said, was it Lord, First Lord of the Rings that Ian McKellen just broke down? Because he said it wasn't, this isn't acting, this is just standing in a green room for 12 hours a day. No, no, the First Lord of the Rings was really practical. Oh, no, I'm thinking of... It was The, the Hobbit that the I Hobbit, agreed. Yeah, sorry. I've got them mixed up. Yeah, I'm gonna say the first Lord of the Rings was really, 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 really practical. Obviously, there was some CG scenes where they needed it, but it was quite practical. The Battle of Helm Deep in the second one, most of that Lord of the Rings were, was mostly practical. 
And uh, the third one did have a bit of CG, quite a bit of CG, but a lot of it was practical as well. Um, but The Hobbit was m- mostly just green screen, apart from, like, I don't know, Bilbo Baggins' his shack. You know, a lot of it was green screen, which The Hobbit isn't a bad film, but it's a bad em- element to the film where it's just constant green screen all the time. I understand that for some locations they needed that, I guess, but for other things they really didn't need it to all be green screen. They could have made some effort, you know, made more effort, I guess, but they might have wanted to just save money. But it's just a bad element of the film, really. Yeah. You know, um, oh, there was something really, really weird about them. Um, uh, I can't remember what I was going to say now about the Hobbit films. Oh, no, no, no. Gandalf was just in a green screen room. And, you know, originally in the first, uh, in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, the way they made the Hobbits look smaller was um, by getting loads of stunt doubles or, you know, mainly just loads of stunt doubles. That's how it was done, really. It was mostly practical how they look smaller. But in the, in I mean, in Lord of the Rings, that's how they did it. But in The Hobbit, Gandalf was in a green screen room for the whole thing. Just talk, well, Ian McKellen was in a, a green screen room talking to himself for ages. And apparently he had a mental breakdown because he had to keep, it's quite quite sad, but it's mental, like, talking just talking to yourself in a massive green screen room. Going, oh, 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 <laughs> What do you think? Um, that is pretty... Well, it's, yeah, I can see why I would have a mental breakdown because imagine just being sat in a room for like I don't know, twelve hours talking to yourself, and yeah, at the end of the day, you can see why that would make sort of a very bad. Well, if it was in someone else's hands and or a different movie, you can see why it would end up being a bad movie because it's just like oh, we'll fix this in post. Oh, we'll do this in post. So no one really cares in the moment. Yeah. Yeah, I get yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. But um, another film, I mean, the CG is done well, but obviously you can tell that it's CG and it just sort of sticks out. I'll tell you what's even worse, though. The Star, the Star Wars prequels, they are absolutely criminal for all the CG that they put in there. It's absolutely unreal. Like, it, the whole film just feels like a massive cartoon, all the Star Wars prequels films. It feels like live action actors in just some mental cartoon with just CG absolutely everywhere, man. Yeah, I saw this thing the other day about saying that yeah. half the stuff they go on about in that movie isn't even explained. Like, this prophecy. What is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's also, yeah, unexplained plot points, yeah. Plot holes. Very weird. Um, yeah, I mean, the dialogue. Oh, yeah, bad dialogue as well. That's another thing, bad thing about bad films. <laughs> you were the chosen one! You underestimate my power. And, uh, Palpatine. I <laughs> am the Senate. Power! Like, really, just really weird lines. And Jar Jar Binks, he was just full of rubbish wasn't he moi moi and all that crap yeah miss i love you it's like come on man you know you think a lot of these direct especially george lucas just think he must be on some sort of drugs when he was making the prequels I mean, because I... you know he actually um for a new hope he had he had loads of um direction and guidance and people said don't do this bro and then empire strikes back someone else directed and then um Return of the Jedi, someone else directed, but for some reason, because George Lucas came up with the story, he got all the street cred and everything, and all the you know credit, and then um, they just let him have full control over all the prequels. I did see this thing about, um, I think it was in the Phantom Menace that there's so many like racial stereotypes in there, and it is it is weird like when you notice it. Yeah. I don't want to turn this into a like with the, um, racist thing, but, but yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, like with the, um, what are they called? The Separatists, uh, Newt Gunray, and the other person, and Jar Jar Binks, they say is um, long alien ears alike. I don't know, or whatever them thing. I don't know if they are ears, whatever they are on the back of his head that are hanging down are meant to be like dreadlocks. and I don't know, I don't know. Um, 
I mean, if that's what George Lucas was going for, that's quite weird. Uh, but who knows? With him, he's just a bit of a lunatic, really, isn't he? With, yeah. with the prequels, anyway. He's a nice bloke for life. I mean, he donated four billion dollars to charity when he sold Star Wars. So you got, even though he has more than enough money to live on, you got to give him credit for that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I feel like bad editing can make films crap. Have you ever heard a direct of a director called Godfrey Ho? I have, but I can't picture anything he's done. Okay, basically what he is, he's a director who'd film a film, then he'd take loads and loads of scenes from other films, and he'd dub in weird audio as well. So, say there's someone does a phone call, the that he'd look like he's got a half-decent actor in it on the other end from by editing in a different film phone call, and then that character wouldn't be seen again, or they'd be seen in a really weird scene. So he'd edit loads of things together to make it look like it's all his. Uh, uh, quite weird, really. I don't think that's legal unless you're doing it as a joke. Yeah, that's a like a, a YouTube weird Google area, or to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it can make films good, I guess, if you've got a franchise and you're editing in a flashback montage or something. I suppose that's all right. But if you're, imagine if like I don't know, if bloody the DC films had like the. A DCCU um, had like Dark Knight footage in it or something. Or imagine if, I don't know, Star Wars had Lord of the Rings footage in and just put lightsabers on the swords, you know. It'd just be really bizarre. Be a good movie, but yeah, really weird. Mm. Um, I feel like sometimes actors can take like Ed Norton, for an example, he takes full control over things, especially ever since um, ever since he did American History X and Fight Club. Has he really done anything good since? He just takes over the whole project, and usually it ends up crap. Other some other actors have big egos and take over projects like Marlon Brando, but some of the films he's put fifty percent of his creative ego into it, and they've actually become really good films, like The Godfather One and Apocalypse Now. But um. With Ed Norton, he like took over the Hulk and changed the whole script, and it ended up being a load of crap. So, it ain't really good when actors put too much input into it as well to make a bad film. Um, and also when oh, when actors take things too seriously or not seriously enough, I think that can be bad. Like in the original Back to the Future. I can't remember the geezer who was meant to buy him now, who was originally Marty McFly. It was the dude in who was in Pulp Fiction with the long ginger hair. I can't can't remember his name. Um, oh man, I just can't remember the bloke's name. Oh yeah, I, I remember seeing Eric the test, Stoltz, that's the test it. footage that's that he did. Yeah, and apparently he was just taking the film really, really way too serious. It was not what they were going for at all, to be honest with you. Um, so, they they wanted Michael J. Fox in. They just did not want Eric Stoltz in at all anymore. They was like, please, please, we're begging you. Give us Michael J. Fox. So, they gave them Michael J. Fox. And uh, what would happen is, Michael J. Fox had film the sitcom he was filming at the time. I'm sorry, I can't remember the name. I'm, I'll, um, I'll look it up quickly. Michael J. Here we go. Um, family Ties, that's it. So he'd be filming Family Ties um, from 6am till late at night. Uh, and then and then from midnight till four in the morning, he'd film Back to the Future. Then he'd have to be carried back and he'd be asleep. And then they'd get him up at 6am to film Family Ties. And he had to do that for six months. But mainly because Eric Stoltz took the role so serious. But there are some actors who just piss around and have too much of a laugh like I don't know Arnold Schwarzenegger Sylvester Stallone they just and The Rock they just do it for big ego boost don't they just to be the main big big tough bloke and the best person in the film who beats everyone you know yeah I mean they've got some weird contracts in Hollywood about like Sylvester Stallone and uh, Jason Statham's the other one where they can't appear to be weak in the movie it's really weird <laughs> weird how can Yuri be that big? That is 
be gone. Oh man. Because I know it was in the Fast and Furious movie. Like, you're I an think it was you meant five that they said. <laughs> that they basically made up this theory or something that if if you get punched twice, I can headbutt you because that's equal. Well, they tried to do it and it didn't work out. That's so weird. I mean, an actor. I mean, no wonder most of Jason Statham's films, they might be successful and get the money in, but they're not critically acclaimed at all. Same, same as most of The Rock's films. And to be honest, they can't act at all. They're not very good actors, really. So um, they're good at playing themselves, I guess. But if you're not doing exactly what the director says and you're just doing your own thing. I mean, sure, ad-lib ad libbing lines and however you say that word, ad-lib, ad you know, making up the stuff as you go on the flow. I suppose it's all right, but sometimes it can just totally ruin everything and mess everything up. You know, if the director's telling you to do something and they're not happy with the thing that you're adding in, then you should just listen to them, to be honest. Don't be making these contracts where you're the, you know, you're the dog's bollocks for the whole film, you know. And it's boring when characters just win all the time. You, you have no interest in it, you know, you just get bored because it's predictable. It's like characters always get treated like crap and lose all the time. It's like crap, boring. Yeah. It needs to be a mixture, you know. I think we can wrap up there then and talk about the next thing, if you want. Uh, yeah, so the next thing is next-gen consoles. So, well, pretty much just PS5 and whatever the new Xbox is going to be called. The Xbox Scarlet, yeah. Man... First things first, I don't I don't really know what to say. To be honest, which one are we getting? It's such a hard one because you don't know what's going to happen. Like, obviously, I'm going to get a gaming laptop um, when this whole pandemic's over and I'm back into work, you know. But, um, yeah, I don't know about next-gen consoles, to be honest, because they're really... Um, one of my mates was telling me about it, who's a big um, PC buff. I'll just try and find the message of what he was telling me because he said that they're um oh man my phone's fucked there we go my phone was just messing up then and it's still messing up now um all right then he oh man I hate I hate when this shit happens my phone just keeps turning on and off constantly like it keeps going to black screen and then I just oh. but um yeah. He said they're starting to do PC, Xbox is starting to do PC releases now and PS4 are starting with um, Horizon Zero Dawn. So just logically thinking with seeing how the trend is going on a business standpoint, exclusives don't make any sense anymore and is more profitable to give away um, give, uh, access to a wider wider audience. What do you think of that? It makes sense though, doesn't it? Well, for Hello? exclusives. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I can hear you. Yeah. All right, I thought the audio dropped to my end as well. But yeah, with exclusives, it doesn't make much sense anymore because there's so many people now who own all consoles and stuff that it's not like you get a PlayStation and that's it. Most people get a PlayStation, then get an Xbox, then get a PC. Yeah. So there's very little. I mean, point. if you've got the money, yeah, that's what you're doing, is. Yeah. You want Uh, to be honest, I sort of feel like Xbox are definitely going to stick with Halo, even though, in my opinion and in a lot of other people's opinions, Halo hasn't really been that good since Halo Reach. Halo Reach was great and then Halo 4 was crap. There, there were elements in Halo 4 and 5, but they weren't very good. Halo Wars 2 was alright at first, but then it just turned into a big rock paper. No, it was rock paper scissors at first, like with the different people you pick, and then... And then you, um, then in the multiplayer, it just became pay to win, so it was a waste of time, really. I don't, I don't think exclusives are the reason why PS4 won. It's a good argument, um, but I feel like Xbox just had a bad launch with Xbox Connect, really. You know. Yeah. And again, that isn't really me being biased. I did end up getting a PS4, but it was just to get the same games because I had friends with that game games on there at the time, and I just thought, oh, what was the point of this daftness? So I'm just probably going to get a gaming laptop. And then, um, I don't know, man. I'll just see what people say, to be honest. If PS5 games better and it has all the apps on there as well, might as well go for that, really, if it's got some some half-decent games and it games better, you know. 
But the new PlayStation controller, I did like it at first, but thinking about it, it looks a little bit weird, to be honest. Uh, oh, yeah, because isn't it like a vertical tower or something? No. I don't know. I'm sorry, did you say PS5 or Xbox? Because he cut out for a second. I said PS5. Oh, um, I have no idea. what. Oh, I've seen the controller, but I don't know what the console looks like. I know the Xbox is like a vertical tower now. Yeah, yeah, it's like a little fridge, which puts me off a little bit, to be honest. Because um, I'm sort of thinking to myself, well, where the bloody hell am I going to fit that? You know, I'm looking at my shell, few shelves right now, and I'm thinking... Where am I going? What actually? Where is anyone going to fit a mini fridge in their room? I mean, bloody hell! Like oh, on the God. shelves near to, how are they going to fit a bloody mini fridge in? And what's the point of having a mini fridge? Surely, as it's that big. In in one aspect, you can think, oh, because it's bigger, it won't get damaged. But like, because it's bigger, doesn't it need more to go into it and more looking after and more stuff? Because the problem with the my I had this really big Xbox One at first. And um, it ended up, it lasted for 2014. Then the disc started messing up in um, late 2018. And then 2019, the discs weren't working at all, like in mid 2019. So I had to get a new smaller Xbox One. And I just feel like that, that if they're going to make it really, really big and they're just bothered all about power, it could end up messing up, to be honest. Uh, I, I don't really know. But my honest. PS4, that's lasted. Yeah. Yeah. Mind you, I bought PS4 in 2017, so who knows, man? Who knows? Uh, so, yeah, as that geezer said to me, and you agreed, exclusives aren't really. It doesn't really make much logical sense anymore. I'll just stick to um, gaming on a laptop, to be honest, a uh, gaming laptop probably. But maybe get a PS5 or an Xbox. It just. It just depends what the games are like and what the reviews are like, really. Obviously, if they move all the apps off, then I'll probably end up getting a um, PS5, I guess, with an external hard drive or maybe an Xbox Scarlet. I'll just have to see. The main thing that's putting me off the Xbox Scarlet is that it's just a massive mini fridge. I don't really see. I just, I just don't have the space. I know the um, PS5 looks a bit like a Covenant ship, but you can fit that in better, in my opinion. Yeah. Sorry, what do you I'm, think I'm you'll just, be getting then? That's made me laugh then. Uh, I, I, to be honest, I probably won't be getting either for at least a couple of years. Okay, what about... So you'll just see what people say then, and then you'll make a decision. Yeah, I mean, I don't really game that much anymore, to be honest. I, I, I mostly just play casual stuff on like my Switch. So I'm, I, I used to be really into like games and stuff, but now I just, I'm not really that, that bothered. Yeah, that's fair enough, mate. Um, Unless anyone wants to buy yeah, a I'm, I'm ma- No, I'm not just joking. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably see what people say as well at first. But um, just, as I say, Xbox is just a massive mini fridge. At first, I was sort of all right, but then all right with it. But then I thought, bloody hell, where where will I put all this? You know. So um, yeah. That's all I've got to say about that, really. Oh, oh wait, no, 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 I was going to say a few more things. Um, I mean, the the PS4 and Xbox One are quite, you know, they seem quite advanced, to be honest, still. They've still held up quite well. Um, like the way it's set out and the menus and all that. So I don't know how to make a massive upgrade on these new consoles, to be honest. I'm looking forward to seeing it. I hope they do keep all the apps on the old consoles for many years, so I don't want them to just get rid of them straight away, you know. And, um, yeah, I mean, to be honest, PlayStation has always had more buys, usually. PS1 and 2 had an insane amount of buys, man. PS2 had, like, 155 million or something. Something ridiculous. I think that was partly because it was the first... If you didn't have a DVD play, you could play your stuff on the PS2. You play your DVDs on the PS2, you know. I didn't have a Blu-ray. No, that was PS3, wasn't it? I had Blu-ray. No, no, I meant it, if people didn't have a DVD player at the time, they could yeah. use their PS2. I was saying, like, and the PS3 had the Blu-ray player, wasn't it, built in? Uh, yeah. 
because the Xbox had the HD DVD, which still totally failed. Hmm. Well, to be honest, though, it is mostly. I feel like DV having a DVD player on there is a lot more innovative than just having some Blu-ray thing. Like Blu-ray was, you know, there isn't really much difference. Like I know it makes it look slightly better, but you know, it's not really a big deal to me. As you probably all know, I'm not a fan of the PS3. I thought it was a bit crap, really. The only good thing was free online. It had no exclusives, in my opinion. Um, no good exclusives apart from like Little Big Planet. 360 was an insanely good console, apart from the Red Ring of Death. So, yeah. But PS2 absolutely wiped the floor with the first Xbox, though. Absolutely wiped the floor with it. Best console ever. Yeah. Bloody hell, PS4 has 108 million now. Fair play to them. Fair play to Sony. Yeah. 